My gear has switched a lot over the past couple of years. I switched camera brands, setups, like it was nothing. I mean, you can just watch the whole history of all of these changes on my YouTube channel. But anyway, I feel like I'm finally settling with my current camera kit. This kit can change quite a lot depending on the situation, depending on the shoot, because depending on the shoot or the trip I'm going on, I bring a different kind of setup with me. Because over the past couple of months and even years maybe, I'm actually downsizing my kit and actually just buying and sticking to what I actually use on a daily basis. So if I have some gear laying around that I don't really use, I just sell that. I'm also going to show you all the sizes of camera bags that I have and which one I bring on which trip and what I actually put in the camera bags. First on the list is obviously my Sony a7C2, which I'm shooting on right now. It's one of the best full frame cameras with amazing specs. It's pretty similar to the Sony a7 IV and to the Lumix S5 Mark II that I had previously. By the way, if you want to find out why I switched from the S5 Mark II to the Sony a7C2, check out my video over here. I'm not going to ramble too much about the specs, but I'll just list the main ones. It has a 33 megapixel sensor, it shoots 4K 10-bit 422, and it can even shoot 4K 10-bit 422 in 60p, but then obviously you get the crop. You also can import LUTs, it has insane autofocus due to the new AI chip. It has a super small form factor, which I really like, and it also looks very good. It's really dope all in one package, and the great thing about Sony is that you get a lot of support from other camera brands, from other lens manufacturers, and also accessory manufacturers. And that was something that I was truly missing on a Panasonic camera. The second item on my list is a 24-70mm f2.8 G Master Mark II. And this thing is a beast. I'm actually super surprised to how light it actually is. It's like 690 grams. Because previously I had the Sigma 28-70mm f2.8 and even though I really liked it and it only weighed like 450 grams, I was really missing the 4mm on the wide end because I also had a 16 to 28mm f2.8 but I figured that I didn't use that lens too much so I actually never used it so I sold that lens and then I thought like hmm, why not just invest in a G Master Mark II and I'd have the 4mm on the wide end and this is like a lens that I use 95% of the time. I could just go out on a trip and I could do everything with this single lens. If you think about the size, the weight, also the amazing minimum focusing distance, I'll just show you some clips over here. It's almost like a macro lens, which is pretty insane. The amazing autofocus combined with the Sony camera, of course, it's just a great all-in-one package. And right now I think there's like $200 off and there's also like a $100 discount at the moment, or at least that was the case for me. So do I think it's worth the hefty price? Then yeah, I think it is. Then we also had a Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8 G2 lens. And this tiny beast over here only weighs 900 grams. So that's really awesome. Because I'm noticing that the longer I do this craft, the more I enjoy shooting with lighter gear. It's just a more enjoyable experience. And even though this lens doesn't go all the way to 200 millimeters, I feel like it's not that important on the longer focal length. I also could have gone for the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter G Master Mark II. It's like 150 grams heavier, I think. And it's also quite a bit longer. And that's something that I didn't really like. I didn't want the lens to be too long, so it's easily packable into my bags. I do miss out on not being able to use like a extender to get even further with my lens, but I'm not bothered by that too much because I don't shoot that much wildlife or any of that kind of subject. So I also do miss out on the image stabilization of the lens, but then again, the Sony a7C2 has very good image stabilization up to seven stops. So I don't feel like I really need that. Then we have my two tiny beasts, the Samyang 35 mm and the 24 mm and just look at how small these actually are. They're almost like pancake lenses, not entirely, but they're very, very small. These are the perfect EDC lenses. I basically bring my Sony a7C2 with these lenses everywhere with me. So for me personally, it replaced my Fuji X100V. And not to say that I didn't like the Fuji X100V because it's an awesome tiny camera, but yeah, I'm just convinced that for a lot of people, 
the Sony ASMC2 combined with a Samyang 35 or 24mm will be a way better investment in the long term. And if you want to hear my entire reasoning why I think this way, check out my video on it over here. So these lenses weigh under 100 grams, they only cost like $250 each, so that's really amazing. And the autofocus is also pretty good, especially when paired with one of the new Sony cameras. So I never had any issues with them. Then we have my tiny but mighty DJI Mini 4 Pro. And I previously had a DJI Air 2S and even though the image was really amazing, I switched from that one to this one because first of all, it weighs under 250 grams. So you're going to have way less hassle to fly this thing around because you don't need all the licenses and stuff. And also it just packs very easily. It can shoot 4K 10 bit, it even has a 4K 120p mode which is really insane it has all the best auto tracking features from dji you can pair it with this really awesome smart controller you can even shoot in d log m and it has a 1.1.3 cmos sensor and it's actually pretty good in low light i was really surprised by that the wind resistance is also really good and i truly think that this is the best drone for solo creators especially if you don't use a drone on a daily or a weekly basis then we have my tiny beast over here this is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and it's truly my best camera purchase of 2023 without exaggeration. I feel like every solo creator needs this tool. It's just truly amazing. It's a perfect vlog and b-roll camera. It can shoot in 4K 10 bit up to 60 frames per second. It has amazing auto tracking features and due to this tiny size, you can get some really unique shots with it. You can get some amazing color grades out of it because it shoots in D-Log M as well. It's super good in low light due to its one inch sensor and it's super packable because I can easily put this into the pocket of my jacket, which is really awesome. By the way, if you want to see my full review on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, you can check it out over here. So I recently bought the DJI Osmo Action 4 and I've never been a huge fan of action cams. In the past, I would have just used these for like POV photography videos for my YouTube channel. And I always had GoPros. And I was truly never a fan of GoPro because the UI sucked, the user experience sucked, everything was just pretty laggy and I didn't like the quality that much. After that, I got the Insta360 X3 and even though it's pretty cool, I feel like the 360 feature is kind of gimmicky and the quality is even worse. So that's why I got the DJI Osmo Action 4 again, because I wanted to do some POV photography videos again. And if I'm planning to go on a holiday, I want to have some pretty good underwater shots. And that's what this tiny beast can do because it has this tiny sensor which helps you auto balance your footage. And it's pretty reactive. I can easily connect it to the DJI Mimo app, same with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And this has the same type of sensor as the DJI Mini 4 Pro. And having everything from DJI is just super nice because you have similar colors, you have a super awesome workflow and everything will just match together perfectly. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do right now, stick to only two systems. So the Sony system and the DJI system. For camera accessories, I have the Atomos Shinobi and it's a great all around monitor, it does the job. It's pretty cheap. In the past, I had the Atomos Ninja 5 and even though it was pretty great, it was pretty loud because of the fans. I didn't really need the internal recording, so it was kind of overkill for my needs. And that's why I think the Shinobi is a good monitor for a lot of creators. Then we also have two DJI mics and a receiver. And I'm actually recording on the DJI mic right now. As you can see, in the past, I've had a lot of mics like the Rode Fido Mic Pro Plus. I even had the Shure SM7B. And even though these are great mics, I want to stick to two ecosystems. And the DJI Mic 2 connects flawlessly with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and the DJI Osmo Action 4. So that's super useful. And this is probably hands down the best Bluetooth mic out there because it also has 32 bit float audio. So let's say that I'm out to shoot some really fast and loud cars, but I didn't have the time to dial in all of the gain settings, then I'm sure that I can always recover that audio. So that's amazing. And I also recently got the Hoya variable ND filter. What I love about it so much is that the vignetting is minimal and that you're able to go from one and a half stops to nine stops with just a single filter. And this is something 
that I haven't seen on another variable ND filter personally. Because for most of them you have to get two different filters. One of them that goes from 1 to 5 stops and the other one that goes from 6 to 9 stops. So this saves you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. And we also have the earth circular polarizer and this is a must have for when you shoot a lot of colors or reflective objects. Because it basically cuts down the reflections in your image. I also have the Tiffin Glimmer Glass 1 and this is a diffusion filter, similar to the Black Pro Mist filter but it's a bit more subtle. Then I also have this really nice filter pouch from Nizi, which can fit 8 filters. Then we also have the Carbon P Design Travel Tripod and even though I like it and the size is pretty nice, you can pack it really small, I think it's actually a bit overpriced. I'm sure that there are better price to value tripods out there in the market, especially since brands like Small Rig and Dolanzi made their own travel carbon tripod to compete with Peak Designs. And I also don't really like how you don't have the freedom to put your camera in any position you want because of these thingies over here. Then we also have the Small Rig Multi Tool, and something like this is a must have in your kit especially when you regard your camera from time to time. The next one is a Peter Lindgren UPO Tri-Charge Fast Charger and I feel like this is a must have in your camera kit. It can charge 3 batteries at the same time, it has place for 3 SD cards, 2 micro SD cards and 3 CF Express Type A cards. It also has very nice LED indicators through which you can check the battery capacity and you can also use your batteries as a power bank for your other devices. So this accessory basically is a solution to a lot of our creators problems. And the inserts for camera batteries in camera bags are pretty nice but you can't see which batteries are full and which ones are empty so this is a huge solution for that. And we also have this tiny Aperture MC with me, it's a super cool RGB light and it's magnetic so that's really awesome as well. And I usually bring this on travels when I want to take like blue hour or pretty dark portrait photos of my fiance, for example. So it can get pretty bright. It also has some pretty cool effects like cop car, for example. I also have this pretty nice rope strap, which is actually pretty short. And the main reason why I got this is because I saw Peter McKinnon's video on having a short strap like this and it's actually super useful. Especially when you're just walking around with your EDC kit, like for me personally, the A7C2 and the Samyang 24 or 35 mm And it's just super easy to pick it from this height, put it to your eye and to take some photos. So I think that a camera strap from this length is truly underrated. I got this one from Etsy by the way. And then we also had a Peak Design tag bag which is really nice but I mainly use it when I'm traveling to put some cables in there, some SSDs in there and some other tiny accessories that I might need. So it has a lot of different inserts and different compartments so that's that's really nice. If you have questions about any of the gear please let me know in the comments down below but I will list all of these items into the my kit link you can find in the description down below. Alright so let's go over the bags right now and what I actually pack into them. So this tiny bag is my EDC bag and it's basically what I take everywhere with me. And it's also the perfect small bag for when I'm on holiday and I'm just going to a restaurant but I might see something nice on the way over there then I could just easily store this away in this tiny bag. So something what I would put in here is the Sony a7C2, the Samyang 35 or 24mm f2.8, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and a DJI Mic 2. My bigger sling bag is for most of my YouTube trips. So what I would put in here is the Sony a7C2, the 24-70mm f2.8 G Master Mark II and I could add for example the Tamron 70 180 or instead the DJI Mini 4 Pro and then I would also put the Osmo Action 4 and the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 in there. And then basically for my general travel trips I also had the Wonder Provoke 21 liter and basically everything fits in there. But if I really want to have more space and this is usually the main camera bag that I bring to my travels, I could also bring the Wonder Provoke 31 liter with me. The main takeaway that I want to give to you guys is that you don't need to have like lots of different kind of gear. Try to pack as small as possible because that's for me personally the most enjoyable experience. Let me know in the comments down below what your kit is. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video you'll probably enjoy one of these two as well. Come out. Peace.